Okay, good morning, everybody. Thank you all so much for coming. Yeah. Um, thank you, Dave and Chad. We really appreciate you coming and playing that on fairly short notice. Yeah. Really so awesome. we've got our notes here because we're not public speakers, so just bear with <laughs> us. Um, so as you can guess, I'm John Earls. This is Jennifer Blanco. Uh, we're a couple. We're business partners. And we've been collaborating, collaborating together in some form for probably about 15 years, which instantly dates us as old. So uh, when we met um, at the University of Houston, we were both studying painting. Uh, this is in 2000. It was a very intimate setting. We kind of got to know each other then. Um, and then ultimately, you know, John was moving on to get a graduate degree from the School of Joy in New York. Um, we started dating just before that and moved to New York together. And I switched over to design and, um, and at the School of Visual Arts. Yeah, so we went through our schooling and then we ultimately graduated and kind of went on our separate career paths. And after a little while, we decided it really wasn't necessarily what we wanted. You know, we find, found it kind of not very fulfilling. So we decided that we needed to make a change. We wanted to start doing things that were a little bit more collaborative. So we decided to work together and we started our first company, uh, which was called Product Superior in around 2008. So it was a line of stationery that um, we kind of combined our skills together and produced. So you know, Jennifer designed, I illustrated. So this kind of like marked our first step in the way of like collaborating together and kind of we found that we had these like complementary skill sets and things that we were doing separately. Um, John's very good at like building things, very mechanically inclined. Also just great with illustration and painting. Whereas on my side, I'm more of experimenter and kind of like um, definitely on the design side and everything. So we're kind of merging these things together um, and really played with Product Superior. So, so, oh, I'm sorry. So we, uh, we took, the, took Product Superior to the National Stationery Show. And at that point, um, you know, we really kind of decided that we didn't want to go back to working in our own separate fields. We wanted to continue to work together. Um, so we knew that being in New York, we really couldn't do that. So it was time to make a change. We moved back to Houston in 2009. And um, basically, like right about this time, um, I was still kind of doing some freelancing and graphic design things in the meantime that we were kind of tinkering with um, Product Superior. And that ultimately led into the next thing, which was spindle top design. And so now, really, we specialize in branding and website design and packaging and some other things. So this you know, very small thing has kind of become a much bigger thing, where now John and I are partners on this. Um, we have two people that work for us, a designer and a web designer and developer. Right, Josh and Laura. Yeah. And then you're, most of you are probably familiar with some of the things in the community, a lot of like restaurant things, the printing museum. Um, see, it's, it's been really great. Um, and so eventually Product Superior has then evolved into this thing which we now call Workhorse Printmakers. And, Specialized now in letterpress printing, really nice stationary things and invitation, uh, invitations. And we have, we're partners there as well, and we have a pressman, Travis, um, and currently an intern. And although each of these have very small personnel attached to them, there's a lot of like overlap. So, you know, many things that somebody may be doing in Workhorse, sorry, um, you know, overlaps into spindle top and spindle top may be helping out with workhorse here and there. So a lot of different layers of collaboration. And these are some of the things that we've printed. Um, in addition, we've gotten involved in the design community. We're board members of the AIGA. Um, John's a board member at the Printing Museum. Um, if you're not familiar actually with the AIGA, it's a design association here in Houston um, that basically promotes design advocacy. Um, we also teach college, which you heard in the introduction. <laughs> um, so basically, you know, as an extension of like this idea of why we collaborate, there's this concept of the, the lone genius, the lone hero in the American psyche. Yeah, as an American, we're kind of brought up to believe that um, most things are progressed by one person's, you know, willpower or just single act of brilliance. And pretty much this is completely a fabrication. It's a lie. Um, you know, almost everything in society that has been great or influential was done with the help of other people. You know, Thomas Edison, uh, a great inventor, no doubt, but a lot of his ideas were based on collaboration with other inventors and also based on his research team. 
um, a lot of people that really made huge contributions worked in pairs. You know, you've got the Wright brothers, uh, Charles and Ray Eames, which you guys all probably know. You know, they alter or uh, they kind of change the shape of both furniture design, interior design, um, architecture, and manufacturing. And of course, Massimo and Leila Vignelli, who really just kind of helped establish how to navigate a city um, amongst many, many other things and really bringing modernism to the states together. And, and of course. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, really, nobody ever has climbed Mount Everest truly alone. You know, there's a lot of people that have made unassisted solo ascents. And although they've gotten to stand on top of the mountain by themselves, a lot of hard work and a lot of people's efforts got them there. You know, just to climb the mountain, you have to lug all of this gear to the base to go up. So it's definitely not something that anyone can ever truly do alone. In addition, there are people that are maintaining ropes to get up this thing frequently as well. So there's a lot of layers. And then there's this idea of like, you know, the, the tree falling in the forest. Everybody's like heard that phrase. And when you're solo, that's kind of that situation. Whereas when you're working with a group of people, um, all of your successes and failures are combined. Like people know about them. You kind of grow and learn together. Um, yeah, that's that the great thing about working in a group is, you know, your efforts, your efforts are always shared. You know, if you're running a marathon and you win, um, you know, you might get a hug. You might have some people sort of happy for you. But nobody really gets to truly share in that victory or in that loss. And that's what's great about being part of a team. Lots of high fives. You know, you hit the ball out of the park, then you get to round the bases. And when you come out, your dugout's cleared, everybody is slapping your hand. Everybody's rushing home. Yeah, you win and lose as a group. And that's really what's awesome about collaboration. I think it's awesome, too, is not just for the great things, the successes, but those failures. Because afterward, then it's reflecting on, like, OK, what did we do wrong? Like, where are we weak? Where can we kind of like build strength and move forward? Yeah, as a team, you can take the information that you learn, and you can process it more effectively. Because you have outside viewpoints that are different than your own. Another way of like why we collaborate, um, and not just us, is just like in general with people, is an evolutionary response in a lot of ways. Is it's the best response to a society with ever decreasing resources, resources sorry, and more demands. Um, so you know, we think of this in terms of the lone wolf versus the pack of wolves. Yeah, a wolf by itself is a fairly adequate predator. But when it's packed up with a bunch of other wolves, it becomes a truly fearsome force. You know, wolves working together can take down much larger organisms than they could ever take down on their own. Um, you also have kind of the idea of distributed intelligence. You know, it's the idea that as a group, no one person has to remember everything. It can kind of be spread amongst the group, and everyone can help the group's progress along. So it really it, it ties into that idea of many work or many hands make light work. Everybody does their part. The group benefits. So. And we're intrinsically like social animals as well. So there's like that pack mentality, but and you the know, coffee shop idea. Yeah, you know, basically every coffee shop on earth is filled with tons of freelancers. And that's for a reason. <laughs> you know, as human beings, we crave social interaction. We crave people to talk to and discuss our ideas with. Otherwise, you know, it's just kind of an echo chamber. And then there's a poet, John Donne, and everybody's heard this phrase, you know, no man is an island. And I don't think anyone said it any better. And the, the rest of it goes in part as no man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent and a part of the main. And any man's death diminishes me because I'm involved in mankind. So there's this like personal connection of wanting to succeed and being willing to fail together and kind of, again, that, that same whole uh, pack thing. So all these successes and failures being shared, then we process them. We also like to collaborate because collaborations take us into areas that we would never go on our own. You know, we've got um, you know sort of unexpected opportunities and also challenges. You know, that sort of come from working with a group. Yeah. So they they essentially kind of like break up the monotony of work and life and kind of push you in these other areas. Um, just like he was saying that, that you wouldn't have already gone. Um, and teaches a lot, actually, about ourselves and other people. Um, and so like a really good example um, that we were thinking about is Van Books, which is a thing a Brazos bookstore here in town invites us to participate in um, each year. And essentially, like we just in our office collectively come together and like, OK, what can we do to kind of like 
you know, do a new thing this time that brings awareness to this particular cause that's exciting for people of all ages and different demographics and everything. You know, and it's an event that we would never normally get into. The idea was for the whole event and continues to be. We take a printing press, which is big, heavy, usually stationary, and we move it into Brazos Bookstore. We print on the spot and we engage with people. And you know, that's just, that's something that we never would have really probably come to as a solution on our own. But by collaborating with our client, Brazos Bookstore, you know, we kind of go into some place that we never expected to, to be. You know, I think, thinking on it now, like even the idea of bringing a press into a place was undoubtedly a conversation where like, oh, you know, it would be awesome if we brought a press. We're like, yeah, right, we're not gonna do that. And then we actually do it, and then it's become a thing that we like do constantly. Yeah. <laughs> for better or worse. But it's, it's a really fun thing, and it's, it's not an ordinary um, project. It's definitely kind of a different thing as business owners, you know. Um, but it's, it's very exciting, and it's, it's inspiring, and it helps us do all the other things that maybe are not always so fun to do. So we're going to talk a little bit about how we collaborate. And this is a really great uh, slide from Wikipedia. Uh, it says step six, but there, were no, there weren't five steps before this. This is literally a series of things that's on the, actually wiki how, on how to be a successful team player. And this is everything you need to know right here. <laughs> we, don't even, we don't even have to talk. There's like actually looking at a lot of papers, talking about what's on the papers. So um, the, the first step for us, as far as collaboration goes, is, uh, is building trust. You know, we really try to keep an open atmosphere where everybody's ideas and everybody's opinions are valid. And most importantly, um, no idea is stupid. You know, really the, the difference between a good and a bad idea is just application. So if we're thinking of ideas or concepts for one project right now, there may be a wacky idea that's not a good fit for that, but it might be a good fit for a project, you know, three months from now. So encouraging open dialogue and, um, you know, trust for people to just throw out anything means that we've got this wealth of, of ideas and concepts that we can build off of in the future. And a case in point, it was actually as we're kind of preparing for this talk, I was, um, you know, going around kind of asking, like, what can we do for like a, a neat kind of collaborative takeaway to give everybody? And so I was talking with Travis actually about that. And he was like, oh, yeah, I got this idea, but it's, it's, really, it's really stupid. I can't tell you this thing. So I was like, well, what is it? I was like, okay. No, it's really stupid. And so then they finally did. And honestly, I don't even remember what the idea was, but I know that it led to the thing that we ended up doing. And so it was like really awesome. You have to like be open to just hearing the stupid things and they lead to other exciting things. And you have to laugh along the way as well. Yeah, you know, we, we expect a lot of ideas from our team and ourselves and we expect honesty and openness. Um, so criticism, uh, criticism is a crucial point in, um, and collaboration, and it's an act of love. Like you have to, you know, these things come from pure passion to, you know, build them up. Like, and it's not a matter of just negatively trying to tear things down. It's literally, you're trying to like move things forward and come up with the best thing that, you know, pleases everybody and gets everybody excited as well. Yeah, the idea is that if you really truly care about something, you're willing to tear it apart piece by piece to build it up and make it stronger. Yeah. So it's something that's very important to what we do. A lot of like our context on collaboration is, is really in the context of like our, um, in our office and kind of personal life. And so another part of that in the office is this non-hierarchical structure that we kind of have that we can do because we're small and you know, we can kind of run things that way. Um, but everyone, you know, obviously we're the bosses, but it's not like a tyranny. It's not a, like a dictatorship. There's a lot of, like, everyone has a little bit of a zone that they kind of are in, but for the most part, people can kind of float around and do a mixture of things. Um, John likes to say everybody can do everything, which is, like, mostly true, but we can't all run the Heidelberg, like, at any point. I think we could figure it out if for some reason he didn't, didn't show up, but we would struggle for a while trying to figure out, like, what thing is doing what. Somebody would lose a finger or something. I don't know. It'd be cool. So we'd probably just use one of the other presses or something. Yeah, but, but it's the idea that everybody has their zones that they work in, but they can go outside of that at any point. You know, uh, really, if we're working on a project involving um, a brand identity for a client, it's not just a situation where, um, you know, just the designers sit in on the initial, you know, discussions about it. We might have Travis, our pressman, or our intern come in and um, throw out some ideas. And those ultimately may be what develop into the final 
the final solution. You know, it's really that everybody's opinion is valid and we can all sort of go out of side of our comfort zone and, and work collaboratively. Yeah, so tending to view each other really as individuals and um, working companions in that way. You know, part and parcel to this is the idea that uh, because we don't really have a lot of hierarchy, we don't tend to play favorites. You know, again, it's the idea that um, no matter what we're working on, the idea can come from anybody. You know, if it's um, something involving printing, we don't just depend on our print staff to do that. You know, those ideas can come from the designers as well. And some de a lot of design ideas come from print staff. Um, you know, really it's just everybody pitching in and everybody just throwing out whatever they've got. And I, th I think it's a good thing because it's kind of like a weird thing and I don't think, I'm not sure that a lot of other people do the same kind of thing. But it's good in terms of often you're like too close to the thing that you've been working on. And so to drag somebody else in to look at it who hasn't been connected to it in some way and doesn't already have some sort of like baggage connected to it can come in and be like, oh, actually, well, this is kind of this thing. Or I knew this bit of history for this area and that influences it in some way. And, and they have a, a totally different perspective. Um, it's also important to say that our best client relationships um, occur when we're treated as equals. Again, it goes into the, the idea of not having hierarchy. Um, you know, when we get best results and when things are really rewarding and really just at their best is when our clients, um, when our clients sort of don't typically approach us in a manner where, you know, you do this, you're doing the work for me. You know, we work together for a common goal, which is, you know, trying to achieve the best outcome for our clients. So basically kind of like working together as like a sounding board and kind of building as a shared knowledge. And it can't always be the case, but that's what we strive for. So a lot of this is a lot we were finding feels a lot like playing jazz or what we'd imagine ch playing jazz and watching uh, jazz music musicians um, play. And so there's an element of self-evaluation. Yeah, ego really has no place in our office. Um, <laughs> we rely on uh, self-examination and self-criticism. So it's kind of, there's a little bit of a distinction in that nobody, I think, in our office really thinks that they're awesome at what they do. You know, we can judge our work, um, we can judge our work against that of the greater world. We can kind of place it, we can know how it compares to other things whether it does the job or whether it doesn't do the job, but ultimately we're never satisfied in what we do. And I think that's one of the things that's really important as a group. It keeps us moving forward, but it also allows us to collaborate in different ways than if we all had egos. Um, you know, collaboration, everyone's like, collaboration is about compromise. And that's sort of true. It is about compromise, but it's not always about compromise. Sometimes it's about not compromising at all. And that's sort of where the idea of self-evaluation comes in. Sometimes we get in a room, everyone throws out their ideas, and we kind of all sit back and just discuss and let the idea bubble up to the surface. Um, but sometimes it's a matter of like knowing that your solution is absolutely the best solution and being able to evaluate that critically and then just beating everybody else in the room down until <laughs> they come to terms with that. <laughs> and so, you know, so we oscillate back and forth between those two things, and it, it's fairly successful. For those of you who saw Leslie Skate's talk, it's kind of like the improv dance movement, or it's also like jazz. It's the idea that when one person starts really feeling it, you know, you let them solo, and when they kind of wind down, hey, maybe somebody else picks up the solo, or maybe it goes back to the group. But you just kind of have to feel it out and see whether it's going to be an individual pushing it or the group pushing it forward. It is kind of a delicate balance, though, this whole thing of knowing when to stick to your guns, and that only comes with, like, serious self-evaluation and kind of being critical like okay wait is this really the greatest thing or am I just like trying to push this thing that I want to happen instead and self <laughs> collaboration <laughs> takes flexibility which is kind of what we're talking about you have to be uh, you have to be flexible sometimes again stick to your guns sometimes you don't um, an importance of play so if you were to ever kind of like be a bug on the wall or a fly on the wall or whatever in our office, you'd hear probably some odd conversations, non sequitur things, lots of puns happening, um, a lot of play happening really. And so it's, it's really good because it fosters this environment where there's open communication and you can chat and talk about some things 
Um, you know, obviously we're like professionals, we're still working on the things that need to get done, but you have to have that element of casualness in a lot of ways, so that when it comes down to business and you're kind of like trying to brainstorm and share ideas, you've already established this camaraderie amongst everyone, and you can kind of just throw whatever out, you know? Yeah, although we're dead serious about work, you know, in our interpersonal relationships, um, we're very, very casual. Um, you know, and again, it, this allows all kinds of different ideas to bubble to the surface. A great example of this is we were sitting around trying to think of a... Uh, a way to promote some workhorse things. Like, okay, let's look, say that we're trying to get out of the region of Houston. What are some things that we can actually do um, that, you know, are unique and different other than just sending out a bland mailer or, or whatever? Yeah. Josh had the idea that, oh man, we should, uh, we should make a quarterly publication and mail it out. Oh, it was Travis, actually. <laughs> And, and we then should, Josh uh, added something onto it. Yeah, the name. And then Josh was like, oh, we should call it Quarter Horse. And we were like, oh, we're like, wait, that's yeah, a that's really good actually good. good. Idea. But, you know, again. And so we, we trademarked it, so. Yeah, so nobody <laughs> used it. It's going to happen. Um, but, yeah, you know, these things would never pop out unless we kind of viewed everything as play. So, you know, part and parcel with this is finding the right people to play with. Um, we have kind of an interesting way of hiring people and you know, inviting people to our team. Although everyone who works for us is very talented, that's not really the reason that we hired them. Um, we pretty much live our lives like kids, like six-year-olds and every day's Christmas. And so we try to look for people who approach life in the same, you know, in the same fashion. childlike wonder, basically. Exactly. We look for people with lots of different interests and who are generalists. You know, we tend to hire people not for their acumens or their uh, resume or portfolio. We hire them more so for what we think that they can do as part of the group, um, you know, what skills they can bring and, you know, and what weaknesses they have and how it can inter interact with everyone else in the office. Um, you know, it's a little bit unorthodox, but it has never failed us, ever. So hence, birds of a feather flock together. So it's kind of like put us on, and it's a weird thing because we've thought a lot on it, and even in terms of the AIGA, where we have a board of like 20-something people, is just trying to figure out like how on earth have we, for the most part, been aligned? Like, you know, personally in our relationship, we've been aligned in the office. I think we've been like very aligned, and then even in this like larger organization, which has a ton of other people and not people that we've always known intimately, but we've come to know more intimately. And it's it's just a matter of like I think we all have these kind of similar facets where. We're very flexible. We have very distinct opinions on things, but it's almost like we're just mutually respectful of each other's ideas and knowing that we're kind of on this ship <coughs> sailing forward in the same direction. We have these larger, like bigger picture goals for things. Um, and so that's somehow just naturally worked out really well, I think. Um, okay. And so I think one other part of that, yeah, go yeah, on. Yeah, so we do a lot of things that are highly collaborative in our personal lives. Um, you know, we don't just collaborate and work. So if you would like to test a relationship with somebody, get in a canoe with them. <laughs> and this could just be that we're purely awful at canoeing. There may be some people that just picked it up right away, but no, I feel I mean, like we're not good. it was definitely a struggle where we had to figure out who was doing what. But yeah, so the thing with paddling a canoe is when you paddle on one side of the canoe, it turns the other way. So you've got somebody paddling in front, you've got somebody paddling in back, and both ends can steer. So you really have to figure out how the hell you're going to get this thing through the lake. Um, you know, you either have to sort of time your strokes together and work collaboratively, or one person has to just lead and the other her person has to match, but it's pretty much collaboration in a highly evolved form. So we like to do a lot of different outdoor activities. We, uh, we camp, we backpack, um, we hike. Mountain bike. Yeah. And one of the things that we found is that in normal life, a lot of your collaborations can have real, you know, real drastic consequences. And, you know, kind of looking to them and examining them teaches you a lot that you can apply to the workplace. You know, for instance, with backpacking, if you get 16 miles out and somebody forgot the food or, you know, you didn't communicate something seriously, it can be really, really bad. <laughs> um, and in addition, you know, a lot of these things are just magnified by the fact that you're wet or you're cold or you're hungry. So you can really learn a lot about it. Yeah, so it's a lot of shared um, roles and responsibilities. Yeah, I mean, take these, you know, take opportunities outside of the workplace to examine collaboration and to, to learn from them, even if it's just cooking dinner. Yeah, cooking is actually a really prime example, and that was one thing that I think we used to be better collaborators on, but maybe not so much. Well, I can't cook at all. So. <laughs> but it would be like, so it's like, okay, I'm the one who's planning the meal and prepping and like, or cooking everything, 
and he'd be the chopping person and preparing like some of the elements together, and then he'd be doing like the dishes part. So there's like, I mean, there's, and that's that's a simple form of collaboration though. And if you can get those basic things to work, then you can pretty much do anything, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we look for these opportunities and like and we're kind of like paying attention to them and learning from them all along the way. Oops. All right, so collaboration isn't for everyone. Um, you know, some people are just not going to be comfortable with the sort of intimacy and the vulnerability of collaboration. Um, and that's okay. I mean, it, it's not for everybody. Yeah. You know, and if you're one of those people that feels more comfortable working by yourself, that's cool. Do it. You know, don't try to force it because it's not going to be very rewarding for you. Yeah, so with, within the group, there is absolutely a layer of um, a lot of just being patient and kind of that, that playing jazz thing of balancing with other people and letting them we lead with their strengths and you kind of fall back and then, you know, supplement when needed and things. Um, and that, I think that's one thing that we've kind of found is like, you know, like in the past, like I felt like I was this lone wolf, but realized like, no, that it, things are better when we're working together. When I'm working with John on things, whether it's at home or at work and working with other people at work and in the outside community, um, and it's, it's also just so much more rewarding and exciting, but you know, there's, there's certain, certain people th really thrive much more in you know, kind of like solo than they do in groups. So just being conscious of when it's working and when it's not working for you or maybe a team member. Um, and I think like, you know, as we've kind of like gone through and like really try to, you know, this isn't a usual talk for us. Um, we don't do a lot of talking in the first place, but it's typically been about a work thing, and so this has been more of like, huh, like how are we actually approaching, you know, all these things that we do professionally, but in a relationship, and we're kind of these weirdos that are like always together, which I'm sure other people are just kind of baffled by, even writing to work together and home. So, but there were th things that we found throughout thinking and evaluating everything um, that were themes, and so. I think these are like really good lessons. There's like you know five things that would be really good lessons to go by in terms of collaborating and kind of self-awareness. And the first one is being very humble, not humble Texas. <laughs> yeah, again, uh, you know, like we discussed, uh, self-evaluation. You know, be humble about what you do, but also be realistic about where it fits into things. Yeah. I think we're both aware like there are things that we're really good at and we can do good, but we can always get better. There's always like room to grow and, and the sky's the limit. Like it, it just always changes. Um, being flexible and just like we mentioned earlier, just kind of being able to bend and really think about things and let people like thrive in different situations and so forth. Yeah, invest yourself in other people's ideas. That's a, another way of being flexible. And it's, also, it's just a really great thing because you learn new things. You learn things about yourself, you learn things about other people. Um, so it's a lot of fun, and it's rewarding. Being critical. You know, again, invest the time and the effort to improving other people's ideas as well as your own. Um, you know, that, that just always moves the ball forward. There's and it's very important to teams. And tying into all three of these things really is like, you know, kind of knowing when, um, your thing wasn't like the best thing or you were incorrect about something. I think that's actually one part that we kind of didn't totally point out is like admitting when you're wrong and like, all right, you were totally right about this thing and this is what we gotta do to like do this thing, like move forward now. Um, so being aware, being critical, um, being willing to just like, you have to have these very open environments and establish these relationships with people where you can point out, it's like, ah, I don't want to tell you this thing is not quite right, but it's not quite right, and I don't have all the answers, but let's t try to talk about it and work through it somehow together. And know that I'm coming from like a really good place just to like do more. Being incredibly patient with people. Um, and sometimes we're not very patient, we struggle with actually all of these things together. But being patient and hearing people out, um, you know, I definitely, like, or in, collectively in the office, we're definitely both pushing, like, hey, you know, if, if you really don't feel good about this thing, like, we've got to, like, you know, communicate these things earlier on and clearly communicate them um, and be patient with one another, um, you know, to work things through as well, both personally and professionally. And then the last one is having empathy. Um, this is a really huge one. I don't know if you wanted to 
collaborate. Yeah, I mean, it's just the idea uh, of just being able to sort of put yourself in, in the rest of the team's shoes. Try to figure out where they're coming from with ideas and, and really just understand that they might be less comfortable working in a group than you are and, and just being patient with them. Yeah, being uh, cordial about things and that, and that, you know, I think this one's like also just a really tough one in general, um, working with other people is just like, you hit a point, I think in like typical office environments where there's like these hard, rigid, like hierarchical like structures in place. And so the one at the top is saying, no, we need to do this. And the ones at the bottom are like, we can't do that because this thing, but they don't want to hear any of the details. It's like, yes or no. So it's like, you know, being empathetic, no matter how awesome you may be or whatever is just kind of, you know, thinking like, well, what's this other, per like, how does this other person possibly feel or how am I making other people feel? So. Yeah. So that's basically it. Hopefully you guys can all go out and be amazing collaborators from now on. <laughs>